Hi, my name is Dakota Nelson, and I'm working to spread awareness about the issues that are facing West Virginians all around our state. I'm doing so by running for a seat in the House of Delegates in West Virginia, right here in District 16. As a campaign, we are absolutely going to plunge into this process, issues first. And we want to make no mistake about why we feel that is important. I want to take the opportunity to talk to you about what we want for West Virginia, what we want out of West Virginia. But first, I'm willing to tell you what we as a campaign are willing to do, and that is to turn the corner on how we approach our community. We are going to be a service-oriented campaign that helps spread the awareness on the issues that need to be understood, that need to be acted upon, that need to be resolved. So let's start by turning the corner on how we understand wages in the state of West Virginia. Often it's politicized, but the matter of fact is we're talking about numbers and we're trying to get the numbers that allow for West Virginians to have a livable wage as a result of working hard here in our state. Right now, we have a poverty wage. With this poverty wage, it has a major effect on government in our state. The more dependence that is created by a poverty wage, the more likely that folks who work full time in our state cannot provide for themselves or their family the more government dependence we create. Now, this changes the dialogue of wages, and deservingly so. We need to understand the effect wages have on the size of government. If we want people to live independently, then we got to tell them that working hard in this state will allow them to do just that. So let's use wages, very naturally, to turn the corner on another important subject, and that's corporate welfare. Right now, in our state, there is a lot of rhetoric about who we should blame, and very often, it's our neighbors, our loved ones, who are suffering to fight their way out of poverty. And on the other hand, who gets left out of the discussion are the corporations all around our state that receive corporate welfare. We are among the nation's top payers per resident to these corporate entities that come here and provide us with jobs that lead us into poverty. So when these corporations are not willing to pay a livable wage, which allows folks to get by working full time in our state, what they do is create the need for the programs that our tax dollars fund. So in effect, we are truly subsidizing their payroll. Where they don't pay, you, I, anyone who pays taxes does pay. The energy future of West Virginia, I think, is a place fit for us to turn the corner. I think it is about time that when it comes to resources in our state and how we create energy, that the profits from that stay here in our state with our people and with our workers. To do that, I think we focus on a clean energy future that is sustainable in the jobs that it offers our communities. We move towards a energy future that really reflects our care for the next generation, for the planet, for the state that we boast as wild and wonderful. We make the steps that we know we need to make. We make the steps that we can and should make. Turning the corner on how we understand addiction and the disease that it is will be a cornerstone to healing our community and our brothers and sisters who now suffer from an opioid addiction. An addiction that was manufactured with intent by billionaire drug makers from out of state who used their pill mills to shuffle in hundreds of millions of pills to our brothers and sisters and now have them sick with the disease that they created for the profit that they took out of our state. Now, it is up to us to make the stance, to make the statement that we are willing to fight back, that we do have the backbone to keep those pill mills out of our state. And I think that legislatively, we absolutely have a responsibility to do anything in our power to make that happen. Truth be told, only the brave only has real credence when we have the courage and the will to step up and accept one another for who we are. So let's turn the corner as a community in response to what some of us may feel is a broken political environment. Let's create the avenues to join one another in our neighborhoods in safe, happy, and healthy spaces with good food, in good company. These are the places and the steps we have to take if we really want solutions to come about for us and by us.